so let's let me just quickly then introduce the next group, which is uh, appropriately enough called quarantine urbanism. Um, these are some of the research questions that they've been looking at, the, uh, in, which perhaps starts with the how it is that we are all uh, at present um, uncomfortably adapting to various psychogeographies of isolation. Um, and in, in, in that course, we, we learn um, a visceral new vocabulary such as social distancing, compliant building design, and, and so forth. Um, as Jeff and Nicola uh, made clear, quarantine is is a, a kind of suspended intermediate status. It's a limbo, um, one that we are all feeling uh, as well as seeing as days slur into weeks. Uh, our, and meanwhile, as our uh, our immediate habitats, in, in immediate habitats are defined by these sometimes paranoid new relations between inside and outside, um, we come to realize that many of these uh, situations may be more or less uh, permanent in, very, in, in various ways. Uh, fossils of, fossils of what? We will yet to be determined. Um, and so I guess right now we're all kind of looking at images of Chinese or Italian cities as they begin to uh, slowly reopen, um, or perhaps that's where we live already, uh, for many of us online with this, with this group. Uh, we see students separated into little cubes, business re businesses reshaped into touchless experiences, benches taped over in elaborate botanical patterns with warning tape, thermometers installed at building entrances, entrances, and we're amazed, uh, in a way, I suppose, by all this spontaneous, spontaneous and ingenious forms of physical interface design um, uh, that puts IDEO and the rest to shame, for sure, but also with an eye to uh, what comes next, uh, in that these cities, we also see in these images a kind of um, our immediate future. These cities are um, a month and a half ahead of us and represent perhaps in a way where we're heading. We also see uh, the rise of all of the ancient stupidities of plague years. The virus comes from our foes. You can kill it with Clorox. It doesn't come into churches, uh, the whole shebang. So this group, which uh, quarantine urbanism took an historical path into this question uh, and, per and has developed something of an index or a catalog of these phenomenon uh, which will, I'm sure will serve as well. So with that, I pass to Quarantine Urbanism. Hi, my name is Mila. I'm a part of Quarantine Urbanism Group and I'm quarantining now in Moscow. Uh, hi all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, this day. Uh, my name is Eduardo Castillo Inuesa um, and I'm right now cur uh, currently quarantining from Madrid. Hi, uh, my name is Tigran. I'm currently quarantined in Dubai. Hi, everyone. I'm Judy, and I'm quarantined now in Moscow. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm uh, in lockdown Berlin, which is sort of 50% post-work utopia and 50% decline of civilization, so not all that different to usual. I'm going to play uh, a little intro video and then talk you through the website, which we just launched today. On April 3rd, 2020, the front page of the New York Times informed its readers that 50% of all humans on Earth were under stay-home orders. Three weeks earlier, on March 11th, when the WHO confirmed that COVID-19 had become a pandemic, COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The ability of cities worldwide to respond to the accelerating health emergency was placed under review. Apartments, hotel rooms, cruise liners, and even parking lots became makeshift quarantine facilities, as the city's ability to provide basic services, from heat to information, was sublimated to the task of containing a microscopic parasite. We'll do a quarantine. National emergency. Going for a walk is no longer allowed. Quarantining. Quarantine. 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 Quarantine, then, is a type of purgatory, a logistical protocol for managing space which mandates the construction of temporal and physical barriers designed to separate one group of people or things from another. Think about the complex arrangement of an airport terminal. 
where passengers arrive and can move around without having been admitted at their destination. It's a similar principle for those suspected of carrying a virus. In this analogy, medical testing is like passport control. Before you go through, you are a nimble. Quarantine urbanism isn't what it sounds like. Instead of a state of exception brought on by unforeseeable events, a condition of containment and surveillance imposed upon the city, we should look at it as a cyclical engine for social and material transformation that has been learned and forgotten throughout history, the remain of which can be seen all around us. A question then emerges. What will cities look like in the aftermath of COVID-19? What will the stress test of 2020 reveal about the shifting composition of contemporary urbanism? Quarantinology is a new discipline for the pandemic age. It's a mode of experimental archaeology that uses quarantine as a sensor to reveal changes in the city and speculate about its future. In a catalogue of hyperfunctional logistics available on mobile, desktop or PDF download, it asks how dual used and mixed typologies could produce a future in which we no longer need to place homeless people in empty parking spaces or build intensive care hospitals from scratch. So from this sort of jumping off point, and I'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to Jeff and Nicola, who's whose uh, breadth of research was was extremely useful in kind of kicking us off and enabling us to kind of speculate a little bit about what might come next. We sort of um, observed this this kind of th this pattern of a negotiation of uh, suspicion and trust and, and the kinds of technologies that had been deployed throughout history in order to to kind of uh, to impose historic quarantines. Um, and what we noticed was that the lessons of quarantine seem to be forgotten and, and need to be relearned every single time as we go as we go along. So one good example of this, a quick example, would be um, the uh, the quarantining of, of passengers on ships before they disembark. This was something that was deemed both counterproductive and, and morally dubious quite a long time ago. Um, and when uh, the Americans were building the immigration hub at uh, Ellis Island, they decided that they needed to have a hospital with a sort of lazaretto style facility on board because keeping people on the ships was going to lead to the, the spread of disease. Clearly, uh, in March, uh, we, saw, we all saw the Diamond Princess, the second largest uh, cluster of COVID-19 cases outside of China, uh, kind of proved that that was one of many lessons that, that we'd forgotten. So on our website, we've basically assembled a kind of, a kind of catalog of, uh, of speculations uh, and projections about what the future might look like after COVID-19. The way that we did this was by kind of looking through the history and, uh, and kind of finding sort of um, kind of uh, trends within, within urbanism and, and uh, that are sort of revealed by the arrival of quarantine and then kind of intensifying them sometimes to quite utopian ends, sometimes to quite dystopian ends sometimes to quite impractical ends and sometimes to rather inevitable ends. Um, so the kinds of issues we're looking at here might involve uh, the use of public space, how that's going to be transformed, the, the place of labor within the home, outside of the home, uh, the, the kind of future of, of real estate in a kind of, in the age of pandemics, uh, the kind of disease proof industrial design that might, that might occur. And I saw someone in the chat mentioning uh, windows that can be used, say, from a gas station or from, you know, uh, a restaurant selling food, these kind of folk, folk industrial design experiments that are going on uh, in real time. Um, we kind of wanted to see how we could push these things and take them forward. So as an example, this is Radical Harvest, which is a sort of speculation thinking about uh, the work that uh, Mei Tuan Dianping, one of the uh, delivery services in China who have kind of taken the sort of experiment with, um, with their platform to the next level during the, the outbreak in Hubei province. And they uh, created a sort of contactless system of lockers, a bit like Amazon lockers, we all know this. But what they did was they put the sort of health reports and temperature checks on labels on all of the products and all of the food that was being delivered. So we kind of wondered what would happen if you were to try and put 
those kinds of checks and that kind of information on all of the products that were in the supermarket. And uh, we noticed the, the new stories of uh, migrant workers from Eastern Europe being brought to Germany and, and to the UK, non, uh, quarantine notwithstanding, in order to pick fruit, pick fruit. And we kind of wondered what would happen if if the, if the stories of the people who'd been involved in, in producing the products and, and putting them together and perhaps even their, their, the carbon footprint that came with that were to be put onto, um, onto the food. Another quick one would be cubicle communalism. This is kind of a speculation based on the idea that if in the 2010s, the kind of aspirational millennial uh, residence was a loft, a post-industrial space, uh, a warehouse, perhaps next time round it's going to be an abandoned office when we're all working from home and it seemed to us quite apposite in fact because there's a uh, there's so many uh, young people living in a situation where you know they don't inhabit houses but they inhabit rooms within houses and why not this why not a cubicle instead with a shared communal space in the middle so yeah those are the kinds of uh, speculations that we're making and you can see the sort of fullness of the historical argument about the refinding uh, of quarantine time and again the forgetting and refinding on, on Stelkemag I think that's going to be published next week so I'm going to sign off very briefly with a little outro bit of a Friday evening moment and uh, thanks so much for listening Community-based efforts are part of the Chinese government's focus during the epidemic. Thanks, Philip. Thanks, uh, thanks to the Quarantine Urbanism Group.